For such a crazy car market where no one has vehicles, Tim Daly Infinity is your home for an incredible selection of great, quality, used vehicles for any budget. And the best part? Most are backed by the Tim Daly Forever Warranty. Tim Daly Infinity still wants your trade-in or to simply buy your car outright with a quick payoff. Don't wait. Come see us today. Think Tim Daly Infinity and think... It's forever your warranty. Hot Tub Factory Outlet is now open in Draper. Don't wait months for your hot tub. Get it now. Enjoy that outdoor deep soaking experience you've been thinking about all year. Whether you have limited space or lots of room, you can have that relaxation you've been wanting today. Shop Utah's newest selection of Viking hot tubs. They're all on display at the beautiful new showroom. Best pricing in Utah and no wait time while supplies last. Hot Tub Factory Outlets at HotTubFactoryOutlets.com. Good morning, KSL News Time is now 6 o'clock. Today is Friday. It's the first day of October. This is Utah's Morning News. I'm Tim Hughes. And I'm Amanda Dixon. Right now, downtown, 48 degrees. Speeds on I-15, good to go so far. I'm Andy Farnsworth. Our top story this hour, there's a new video out this morning in the investigation into the murder of Gabby Petito. Did you get hit in the face? Looks like something like you in the face. The Moab Police Department released additional body camera video of when they questioned Petito in August after they responded to a domestic violence call. KSL News Radio's Heather Kelly has the update. Heather? Amanda, in the newly released video, we can see fresh bruises on Gabby's arm and a scratch on her cheek. An officer asked Petito to explain how she was injured. Don't worry, just be honest. Right. The officer tells Petito two people saw her boyfriend Brian Laundry hit or punch her. Petito says he only grabbed her face and his fingernail scratched her cheek. The video is making the rounds with all the major news organizations right now. Live, Heather Kelly, KSL News Radio. FBI agents returned to Brian Laundry's family home this week, taking personal items to help search dogs locate him. Former FBI agent and ABC News contributor Brad Garrett calls that a good sign. I would say that the idea that they want to continue with a scent dog to find Brian is fairly encouraging. That means that perhaps they have a location that they're focusing on that we don't know about, and they wanted a fresh scent to see if, in fact, the dogs could track this new area that they're potentially searching as we speak. Laundry has been missing for nearly two weeks after returning from a cross-country trip without Gabby Petito, who was later found dead in Wyoming. Be sure to stay with KSL News Radio for any updates on the Petito case. This weekend is the 191st semi-annual General Conference of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The meetings will once again be held virtually with people listening and watching at home. But the church has made large efforts to make sure the meetings are available to anyone around the world who wants to tune in. KSL News Radio's Nick Wyatt begins our team coverage. Members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints all over the world can now tune in for sessions of General Conference. Where it used to be a community event, church leadership is recognized. That community is now much larger than those living within 100 miles of the conference center. No longer must members anxiously await transcripts or videos posted online. They can listen or watch wherever they are. KSL News Radio will carry every session of the conference live on 102.7 FM, 1160 AM, and the KSL News Radio app. And this weekend during General Conference, we're bringing you special programming, including an update on the Salt Lake Temple renovation project. KSL News Radio's Mary Richards continues our team coverage of General Conference and joins us live from near Temple Square. Mary? Tim, the work is entering the 22nd month as they upgrade and renovate this temple. The director of historic temple renovations for the church, Andy Kirby, says they've excavated many stories down into the ground. We've now exposed that beautiful work. That foundation stood for 168 years and has performed beautifully. Long pipes are going underneath the foundation right now to shore up the building. They're also doing other seismic work from the top down, and the three stories deep north addition will get footings and a foundation soon. Live Mary Richards, KSL News Radio. KSL's top national stories this hour. Congress avoided a government shutdown when President Biden signed a stopgap bill last night. 
But the president's infrastructure bills are still causing a rift between moderate and progressive Democrats. House progressives standing firm with their demand that Congress first pass a separate package on human infrastructure covering everything from early childhood education to the battle against climate change with a price tag of three and a half trillion dollars over 10 years, something too steep for moderate Democrats in the Senate. ABC's Alex Perche in Washington says Nancy Pelosi was seen leaving the Capitol after midnight last night, and she says a vote on the infrastructure bills could take place today. New York City public school teachers have until 5 p.m. today to get a COVID shot or face being fired. There have been much protest over the mayor's mandate and several lawsuits from teachers and other school staff, but lower courts keep ruling in favor of the city. So after some delay, the city's vaccine mandate for public school employees goes into effect tonight at 5 o'clock. ABC's Diana Rocco says a group of teachers filed an emergency request with the U.S. Supreme Court to block the mandate, but so far the deadline is holding. 